Now we'll talk about PAR lights, P-A-R, which stands for a parabolic aluminized reflector. We had just studied ERSs, or ellipsoidal reflector spots, and that ellipsoidal reflector is able to focus all of our light waves into a very specific point that is then collected by the lenses and focused to the stage. A PAR uses a parabola shape, a parabola, which is a much shallower arc. And what a parabola does is gathers the light into parallel, into parallel rays of light. Rather than converge on a specific point, it's able to, the light source, the lamp in the middle here then, all of its rays of light are collected and they all shine in a straight line out of the front of the fixture. Right, so it's parallel right, uh, light rays. This diagram is a little backwards, but it's the best diagram I could find to describe it. Right, so a PAR is named also for its reflector, a, a, para, a parabola, a parabolic, aluminized reflector, right? So it's a shiny surface. Let's look at our next one. Right, so PARs really came into vogue um, when rock and roll tours really started to go out big and um, had just hundreds and hundreds of, of lighting fixtures. And this is what an old school rock and roll PAR looks like. And it is nothing but a tin can. You could make a PAR light out of a coffee can, and many people, including myself, have certainly done so over the history of time. The PAR lamp was self-contained. It had its parabolic reflector um, across the back, its lens on the front, and inside of it, it contained its uh, a lamp. It was all self-contained, and this entire lamp just fit into the back of, the, of this tin can, and that's what produced the light. If you wanted to change the size or the shape of the beam, you had to change the lamp, the reflector, all of it as one self-contained piece. The advantages of this were that it, it was really cheap. You, even now, you can buy a PAR lamp for $25 or $30, and the, and the price of this can is, is minimal, the $40 or $50. So you could produce really bright, intense, um, rugged stage lighting very, very cheaply. Um, which is what early rock and roll was doing. You know, uh, some of the biggest um, tours that were on the road might carry six or seven or eight hundred of these PAR lights, each one with a different color and focused in a direct, different direction. Um, and it was just an easy way to go. Since then, the thousand watt version of this lamp has actually been made illegal. It's no longer it's no longer made. They're no longer able to sell it. You're not allowed to buy it. You will bump into these fixtures over time, but the thousand watt version of this fixture is no longer able to be made or sold. ETC came on the um, uh, lighting designers fell in love with the fixture, right? It's intense horsepower. You know, it was really, really bright. It was really cheap, um, and it produced a beautiful light. Um, and so, lighting designers really enjoyed them and wanted and started using them <clears throat> as these uh, to um, capitalize on that market. ETC did the same thing that they did with the Source 4. They improved the lamp, they improved the reflector, they improved the lenses, and they were able to make a 575 watt version of this same style of fixture and um, uh, that's much more energy efficient um, but still produces the same or similar quality of light of the PAR64. So you can see the reflector on the inside of this um, PAR, the Source 4 PAR that doesn't have a lens, and you can see its uh, lamp cap in the back, right? So this is where the lamp is held in the back. A uh, little thumb screw, you screw that out and you can remove the lamp from the fixture. PARs have minimal control. It's not like a um, an ERS where I have shutters and can control its shape. Um, it really just puts a big puddle of light out on stage. And that puddle of light depends very much on uh, which type of lens you put in. Rather than change the lens, the lamp, and the reflector assembly, ETC mounted the, uh, the lamp and the reflector permanently in the fixture and just made the lenses removable.
and they come in four styles, right? So there is a very narrow spot which produces just a tight circle of light, even at uh, reasonably long distances, at 25, 30 feet. It just puts a shaft of light through the air. A narrow spot, or an NSP, right, has got a dappled texture to the lens. If you look at this image closely, you can see how it's sort of pocked or has little dimples across it, a little bit of frost. And what that um, does is diffuses that circle a little bit. It makes a, <clears throat> a slightly larger circle of light. <clears throat> From there, we go to a medium flood. And at medium flood, it has just a, uh, stripes. And I believe there are eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There are eight stripes that go across the medium flood. <clears throat> and this lens produces an oval of light. So it's a little wider than it is tall. Um, and then the next size is a wide flood. And it has 13 stripes across it, right? And it produces even wider and a little bit taller image. So by changing the lenses, I can control how wide of an image I'm going to have. So I have a VNSP, which is very narrow spot, an NSP, which is a narrow spot, a MFL, which is, stands for medium flood, and a WFL, which stands for wide flood. <clears throat> now, it was really popular in the old PAR 64s and the um, tin can fixtures to be able to spin that lamp and thereby you could adjust that oval and we wanted the same functionality in, in the Source 4 PAR. So they mount the lens actually in a plastic ring and it's a rotating lens ring. And you can access this ring from any of the um, corners essentially of the fixture, what would be the corners of the fixture, but in, in the gap between the gel frame tabs. And by just kind of putting your finger in there, you can spin this plastic ring and spin the lens assembly inside of the PAR, and then you can change the oval. So there are very few options to change um, size or shape uh, of a PAR, shy of just changing the entire lens out. And it's really easy to change them. Well, it's relatively easy to change them. They just pop in and out. No special tools are required, just a little finesse. Um, and then the only adjustment then is to be able to rotate the shape or rotate the oval so that you can um, get whatever sort of effect you want. And I will see you again soon.